Hi, I'm Kerr Posick, and I have Dr. Brasso's Mintu with us today. Oh my gosh, you know, he's been in private practice for over 30 years, but one of the most amazing formulators and one of the most eloquent educators. And what I'd like to have you talk about, Dr. Minchu, is I revive skincare. What this, how this works in the body, how this works on the skin, because I mean, we've been using this now for just a short time and it's like magic. It's like skin magic. So can you give us like the science behind this? Mm -hmm. That's what you're so eloquent at. Well, let's see if I can live up to that uh, to that expectation. Uh, I can tell you a, a little bit about the process of skin renewal, and that process of skin renewal is what we're really going for here. Our target is to have those those cells reproduce and have as many cells one day as we have the next cell. You see, the whole idea of aging is kind of like deficit spending with your credit cards. So if we if we make more than we spend, that's called youth. And then if we're spending exactly as much as we're making, well, that's, that's pretty much homeostasis. We're, we're holding our ground. After about age 30, however, we start to go into deficit spending. And pretty soon we have more cells dying than we have cells being renewed every day. And it's that deficit spending that we're trying to, we're trying to make up the difference for that and we're trying then to, to move forward into some level of equilibrium and maybe even into that regeneration that we call youth. And uh, there are excellent techniques and technologies for that. Let me tell you about a couple of them. The first thing we have to have to have healthier looking skin, young looking skin, we have to have circulation. Circulation comes in three different flavors. We've got macro circulation, intermediate circulation, and micro circulation. The first thing we have to look at is how do we get the nutrients in and the waste product out from our skin? So the first thing we need to do, we need to eat a nutritious diet. We need to get the rest and exercise that could all help support macro circulation. And then there are a number of, of elements, items that we have in, in our, our uh, possession that can help us with that intermediate circulation. I think about um, uh, green tea, a cup of green tea helps to stimulate that intermediate level of, of circulation. I just and saw you drinking a cup of green tea. I was drinking a cup <laughs> of green tea right before we came on. <laughs> and practice what you preach, Care. Absolutely. <laughs> So then you have the microcirculation and microcirculation is all the tiny blood vessels that are in your skin. And those blood vessels carry the nutrients, that final leg, that final little bit to the cell. They carry it through these little vents, capillary vents. It pushes the nutrients and oxygen out into the cell and then it receives all of the waste product that comes from the cell so that we have, have the foundation for good, healthy skin. But that doesn't help us regenerate our, our skin cells. We can still have more dying and less being reproduced until we start talking about stem cell production. Now, stem cell production comes downstream from a growth hormone. So when a cell dies, it leaves a chemical trace and it can be replaced. And its growth hormone is involved in how many stem cells we're going to produce and how much is going to be is going to be replaced day by day. What are the two things that we know that will help us stimulate growth hormone? A good night's sleep and plenty of vigorous exercise. Those will help us to have more growth hormone and therefore more stem cell production. <clears throat> now let's talk about stem cells. Stem cells, you know, there's kind of a scary uh, relationship between stem cells because of something called embryonic stem cells. That's not what we're talking about. Not at all. We're talking about the stem cells that you make in your body every single day to help replace the cells that have just aged out. The cells that have lived a healthy lifespan, <coughs> has done much good in the community, and now it's time for them to be replaced by a newer, younger cell. And you know, you just don't ever hear of people talking about that when they're talking about <laughs> skin uh, products. And and that's like basic, right? 
It's absolutely basic. If you don't do this, you can't do anything else. It doesn't matter what you put on or what you put in. If you're not reproducing those stem cells, you're aging. And if you can reproduce them just at an equilibrium, we know at least we're holding our ground. But if you can just get that into that level where you're producing more stem cells than, you're, than you have cells dying every day, you're getting younger. Your skin is getting younger. And then uh, you're, you're talking about beauty from within. It's not now the plaster job that you put on your face to make you look good for the camera. <laughs> it's instead the healthy glow that comes from inside when you've got circulation bringing nutrients and oxygen in, circulation taking waste products out, and then you've got stem cells reproducing the, the, uh, reproducing the, the new cells when the old cells die. So we'll, we'll talk just for a second about the different kinds of stem cells, the ones specifically for the skin are related to what are called fibroblasts. And they produce these tiny little bodies. Just imagine like, like free floating bubbles that are floating around in the plasma. And those free floating bubbles are called exosomes. Exosomes inside of the stem cell are what get, go over here and replace that cell. We'll go over there and replace that cell. This becomes so important for us to have not just the, the abundance of these multipotent stem cells, but also the little eggs, egg bubbles inside of them, these little exosomes that can migrate because that's where we start to get really the magic of stimulation of stem cell activity. It's not just about now replacing where you put the cream right on that spot, but now they can migrate into other areas. Now understand, you're gonna to have to pay off that debt first before the migration begins, right? You're gonna to have to, to uh, heal up those stem cells right where they are, and then the exosomes begin to migrate. The fibroblast activity begins to migrate. And now pretty soon you get better eyelashes, better eyebrows. Pretty soon you start getting into a better hairline. Whoa. Like my daughter said, dad, your hair is not, receding it's retreating it's in full <laughs> retreat so <clears throat> i'm starting to put the skin uh, the stem cell cream on my face so that once the debt is paid off and i have a full complement now of of stem cells for my skin those little exosomes can start migrating now they can migrate into the eyelashes and the eyebrows and right into that receding hairline and they can also migrate into other tissues we found fibroblast skin cells, stem cells, migrating to the damaged heart when a, after wow. a person had a heart attack. We find migrating stem cells going to the immune glial cells of the brain after a person's had brain, uh, an injury to their brain. So these are not just paying off the debt locally, but contributing to the fund of health throughout the entire body, from the heart to the brain and everywhere else. Amazing. And your eyes? Could they migrate to your eyes as well? They migrate to the eyes and the ears and the frontal lobe of the brain all at the same time and basically at the same rate. So now here's, here's an example of this. Stem cells help with what's called AMD or, or a form of macular degeneration. They help with tinnitus in the ear, ringing in the ear. Stem cells help with a frontal lobe, which is executive function of the brain the wisdom to make good decisions and then carry them out and the motivation to carry them out. That all comes from the frontal lobe of the brain. And it's that which we lose when we have dementias. We lose that executive function first. And so even treating skin stem cells has the ability to migrate now into the eyes, the ears, and the frontal lobe of the brain. Interestingly, all about equally, again, once that, uh, that local debt has been paid off. That is the most fascinating explanation I've ever heard. And when I look at this, I revive skincare that has been, that stimulates stem cell production by two to 300% in a week's time. It's like, holy moly. This is the most important thing I've ever put on my skin. Yeah, that's incredible. How uh, are you doing with that? How does it make your skin look? How does it make you well, feel? Well, I'll, I'll tell you. I'm 75. And I've been using this. I just put it around my eyes, put it around my mouth, put it on my neck. My neck used to look like crepe paper. 
Um, I used to have a lot more wrinkles than I do. But the fact that and this exfoliates the skin, I mean, on a daily basis. And I use just, I mean, you saw how little this is. I just use a teeny tiny little bit of it and it just goes around. But the pet, the fact that it migrates once it's worked in my skin, I mean, and I've, I'm seeing reversal in aging in my skin to think that that can go to my brain and my eyes and my ears and my I mean, uh, that just boggles my mind that we're at a point where why would you put anything else on your skin when you can stimulate your stem cell production and reverse aging and get all these other benefits? I love it. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing all of your brilliant information. I love listening to you, as does everybody else, I'm sure, because... That what you said in 10 minutes time was way beyond anything we knew about skin care. <laughs> so, Dr. Minshew, thank you so much. And for any of you that want more information about this I Revive skin cream, which I call skin magic, um, go back to the person who shared this video with you and ask them to get it for you. Dr. Minshew, thank you. Blessings. Talk You're to welcome. you later. We'll see you again. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye now.